picked up this 1964 Vox Lynx yesterday. Um, it's a little bit of history really. Um, they weren't made for very long in a factory in Italy for Vox. And they were sort of responding to the demand for the Gibson ES335s. And I believe that Vox didn't really have the expertise to make hollow body guitars, <coughs> so they used the Italian um, manufacturers. I think this one is Concianelli, I think, was the factory where these ones were made, and then the next generation, which don't doesn't have this sort of 1960s. Batman um, thing. Um, they were made in the Echo factory. So I didn't pay a great deal for it. And there are some um, problems. It does play okay. I'll give a quick demo later. You can see how loved it is if you look at the frets. You can see the actual fingerboard is worn away there. And the interesting thing is, it's all in first position. There's almost no wear later on. So this is, looks like it's been owned for a long time by a proper, sort of, maybe 60s beat guitar player who didn't really play anything other than open chords. To me it looks like it's a guitar that's been used and loved and not abused. I think everything seems to be original on it. There is um, checking, not checking, but um, cracks to the lacquer. It's probably where people have over tightened screws, I imagine. They all seem to be around screw places. Um, yeah, and there's sort of lacquer damage knocking around all over the place, but it seems fundamentally sound. Again, it's always where there are screws. Probably somebody a little bit. Um, carried away with the screw tightening. <laughs> These batwing um, pit guards do sort of um, go missing. I've been looking on forums to find out a little bit about this guitar and one of the things is trying to get hold of these batwing scratch blades. You can see they're not um, super robust. They're not even fixed particularly well. This, I'll see what I can do about that. Um, everything else seems great. The only other issue with it seems to be um, this tone pot here um, seems to work as a volume control along with the volume control. Now I think that is um, I means something is running to ground without going through the cap. So it's actually just rather than um, rolling off frequencies, it's just rolling off everything. So, I'm going to have to take that out. This this looks like a bit of a pain in the butt type of job because I don't think I can get those out without getting these out. Uh, this is a very, very narrow F-hole to get things in and out of. Well, I'll be using this one obviously, but I'm taking off the scratch blade, but it's that's going to be a tricky job. Um, I'll just have to sort of um, guesstimate how that wiring works because I can't seem to find any schematics on the line. The other thing is, uh, you probably saw before, there is some quite severe fret wear, but only around the first couple of frets. I think what I'm going to try and do, I'm going to stone it first and see if I can um, get it workable. Uh, this is kind of cool. Zero fret there. Um, I want to try. And, I've never done a refret, and I'm going to try and avoid it if I can. Or, um, we might be able to do it without damaging the finish. Which, unlike Gibson's, the finish doesn't go over the fret end. So, if I can't stone it into shape, maybe then I'll um, I'll try and refret. 
And the other thing is the action is very high. I imagine the action is probably always quite high. The neck's pretty straight. I've measured it. Um, now I wonder if the body is slightly collapsed. I don't think so though, but that may account for some of the checking, who knows. Um, and I don't know, it is a bolt-on neck, so I may be able to shim it like you would do with a strat, I don't know. Who knows. I'll have a look when I've got it apart. I'll try and make a couple of videos as I do it so you can see how it comes along. But I think this is going to be a really fun playing guitar when it's done.
Thank you.